think for me, there was a lot of highlights. I did a lot of traveling. Um, it was also my first year as a photographic guy, full, you know, doing full time. And but I got to say, probably the trip that I ended the year, the year off with, um, spending two weeks in Zimbabwe, in Manapools, Chitaki, and in, in Wangi, um, with a very, very awesome a guest of mine, and just the we had great experiences more than purely photographic sightings. Uh, so I got great photographs, but. Um, uh, some better than others, but nothing. Not, it wasn't the highlight. The, the highlight was the experience of being where we were, um, and um, yeah, I think by far that, that to me stands out as the you know, the way to end the year on, on, a, on a high note. Pretty simple question for me to answer because uh, there's a one moment that stands out, and I think it will be a memory for all the rest of my life. It was midnight in the Arctic on top of the bridge on a boat in the middle of Svalbard. Sun is blaring, bitterly cold not a sound to be heard and it was probably just one of the most peaceful most exhilarating experiences that i've ever had um, no one else was around it was just quiet beautiful so different to anything that i've ever experienced before so far removed from anything that I've, I've known and so yeah that, that's a memory that's going to stick with me for a very long time throw in the fact that that trip in itself was just incredible um, and so different it has to has to be my highlight for 2014. Uh, have you ever wondered what it's like to actually be on safari the whole year. Well, not exactly the whole year, because our season started with the big cut safaris. And that was the beginning of the highlights of the year 2014. Big cut was a success much better than the other one before, and we are expecting more next year. Now, a surprise within our year was Shampore, or the South Lift Safari. That was fantastic, because when you look at it, we, even in the background, with all the preparations we do for our guests, we have the enthusiasm from the locals about our success of the year in conservation of lions, integrating with their cattle and the people, and that was, it's happening in my country. Um, then it was, it came sooner, or even later, because we needed to prepare for our migration safari. Fantastic. The preparations, the expectations, the guests, the enthusiasm. It was action, action after action after action. It was improvement after improvement. We were happy the whole time. Safaris with wildlife, they are my highlights. They're the reasons why I want to be here for my family. They're the reasons I have this passion. And we had a surprise. We had, um, we had guests within 2000, in November, after the migration, after the successful migration safaris, we had guests with the journal. And um, we went to Savo East, West, Amboseli, they went to Nakuru and we went to Mara and to prepare for their coming. And Mara again gave out the magic. As usual, it delivered properly. Well, those, that has been my highlights. And I'm happy. And I've always been happy. This is what I've always wanted to do. So they will always stand as my highlights in, uh, in uh, Thank you. My wildlife highlight for the year. All my safaris were actually great. Uh, we had awesome times, uh, some awesome photographic and residual memories were made. But I think for me, the highlight was again Mana Pools. Um, you know, last year we had a great safari and some, you know, just some great feedback. But even but this year was even better. We, had, we, we have a better camp with, we have amazing people who operate the camp. And I think we really do put out one of the premier photographic experiences in Mana Pools. And, and all the guests who traveled with us this year can attest to that, that it's really a, a holistic, immersive wildlife experience. It's not just go there, get your shots. It really is something that you sit there and you take it in through all of your senses. And I think next year is going to be even better because we're adding an extra night and we, we changed a few things in the itinerary to make it more focused on photography. So I think, yes, Monopool's always a highlight for me. Going to be a highlight this year. Probably it was a highlight this year. It's probably going to be a highlight next year as well. So we hope to see you there, some of you, on our trips to Monopool's next year. So this is an incredibly hard question, but I was thinking it's probably just the big cats photo safari in general because just of 
go, being able to go to incredible destinations all in one go. And they were all very, very different with their own exciting and creative opportunities. I think that was just for me amazing. 2014 and Wild Eye has been a great solid year. Um, we've run some magnificent safaris to some great destinations. But more importantly, we've had some great reviews and feedback from those safaris. We've, we've built a great strategy for ourselves and a solid foundation for growth in 2015 and thereafter. So we're looking forward to the forthcoming years and certainly sharing those, hopefully, on a safari with you guys. I think a highlight in between all the trips we do is tough. I think Andrew might have mentioned Svalbard. I think that's always special because it takes, takes me and us out of our, not a comfort zone, but it's different. It's overwhelming on the senses. There's the quietness, there's the vastness, which I mean, even the Masamara doesn't feel that big. It's just, it's a mind blow. So there's moments of that trip where everything, time seems to stop for a moment, and that's just, and you kind of take stock again at that moment thinking, this is special. And I think a very close second, which almost links in, is I had a, a particular moment at a reserve in Kazuna Natal with a client, and his name Phil. Phil was off to Wild Dog specifically. And on this particular occasion we were on foot and he went a bit forward and he sat down on his own to photograph these things, just kind of hang back. And there's that one moment, and I think it's, it's kind of what we do at Wild Eye, it's that one moment where he, he took a couple of shots, he looked up, obviously reassessing and assessing the situation, and he just looked back at me. And that moment on his face, we, we, you, you, it's almost like that's an advertisement for what we want to do. That's that moment of creating experiences. So I think Personally, me, I think it was a Svalbard somewhere, and there's many of them, like time freezes, freezes Svalbard. <laughs> and then the one with Phil specifically where there was that moment where he just looked and you know, okay, that's it. That's why I do what I do. My personal photographic goal for 2015, I haven't really penned it down as such, but I think for me, I'll be exploring I'll be carrying on my exploration of, of, of putting down the long lens in that sense. Uh, I've always had a, a knack for and, and a love for uh, capturing animal scapes, animals in the environment. And this year I really tried to focus uh, on the wildlife trips and also on, on my own personal trips that I took to really try and crank out the wide angle lens a bit, a bit more frequently. So uh, I'll be doing a post on that soon as well on my own blog, just by some of my personal favorites. But it'll be my, my personal favorite sort of uh, shots taken at least a hundred more focal length or something like that so I'm still working on that but for me it'll, it'll be an exploration of, of continuing to add context and, cre and creatively doing that not just zooming out and taking a photo but really creatively adding context to my photos and really telling a story about the landscape because the animals in the landscape are connected and in terms of conservation as well if we don't protect the land don't protect the wild areas we're not going to be able to protect the wild inhabitants of those areas so for me it's a holistic conservation message as well as showing the land landscape of Africa and the and the animals for me as well. It's a it's really something that's captured me from from childhood is the, the beauty of the landscape. It's not just elephants and lions and all these kind of cool things, but it's really a sense of Africa that I want to capture in my photography. So I'll, I'll be exploring that even even further. I think in 2015, more than anything else, I don't have really I don't have any other goals that I've picked out yet. I think, you know, from a photographic guiding point of view, we're quite lucky that we get to return to destinations again and again. Um, and I think if you're not aware of it, you can very easily fall into the trap of just going and shooting what you see. Obviously, you can only shoot what you see, and, you know, we've said that in the past. But I think for me, going back to some of these destinations again next year, I'm going to go back with more specific goals in mind, looking to plug gaps in, in a portfolio, working towards actually capturing the essence of an area, so, you know, looking at what needs to be captured to really tell the story and give us, convey a sense of space um, in those regions. So that, that's my one goal. And the second goal is really to kind of get my website up and running. We've been spending so much time building the WildEye brand and the WildEye website and everything. I'm going to check that out soon. Um, that I, I would like to actually start to pay a little bit more attention to showcasing some of my work, a lot of the stuff which I haven't actually shared before, um, and giving that a platform. So those would be my goals for 2015. It's a tough one. We, we don't often get time out in the field to shoot for us, but still we do have the moments in between. And I think most of us here are going to try and get some time for ourselves in the field because you need that recharge. Almost 
I want to shoot more what I feel than what I see. I had an interesting discussion with someone on Instagram last night about how motion blurs and those things don't belong in wildlife photography. To me, there's a feeling attached to it, apart from you can't shoot this up, but there's a feeling attached. So I think whatever it takes for me to go out of my comfort zone and to start shooting what I feel at the moment and hopefully convey that to the reader of my image rather than just shooting what I see. It's, you can only shoot what you see, but it needs to go deeper. I think for, for clients and stuff as well, is I want to try and take it deeper to a feeling of the moment. It's almost taking the experience of photography and the photograph and kind of combining them. So there's no definitive if I want to try more shutter speeds or apertures or whatever. It's, I think I want to shoot more feeling, if that makes sense. Okay, my photographic goals for 2015, personal goals. I think it's probably destination based. I've got to get to minor pools. I've got to shoot beautiful scenes that um, that occur there. Chitaki Springs, and some of the stuff Marlon showed me coming back from there was insane. I really want to go there. That blue curtain of light that um, hovers underneath the Alberta trees. It's magnificent. That last rays, that golden light that comes through those trees, photographing elephants, lions, wild dogs on foot. I've got to get there this year. So that's my goal for 2015. I think my, for me personally, um, like that's for everyone, it's just to grow as a photographer, to grow in your, in your art, um, in your skill. I'm fortunate to, to do something for a living that I really enjoy. Um, so it, it's not work essentially, but it still is something that is competitive. So I need to better myself constantly and, and get better at it. Um, I think for me is to maybe to, to work on creativity a little bit more photographically, to to perhaps push the boundaries a little bit more in terms of um, maybe bringing stuff like flashes into my photography or working with slower shutters. Um, uh, I'm inspired by photographers like Jerry who does a lot of um, you know, double exposures and things that I still need to wrap my head around. And, um, so I think for me photographically that's one aspect but also just to enjoy it. I don't, I don't want it to become work to the point where um, it, 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 it's, un, it's not enjoyable and um, I've got no intentions of shooting for competitions or shooting for someone else. It's, it's about me and, and the stuff that I enjoy taking photos of and how I enjoy doing it. But, but yes, for 2015 I think I'm keen to, to stretch my abilities more and to, to better um, some of the finer things in my photography. It's quite hard because I'm, I don't know, I'm still learning so much as everything goes and as per a safari you know how I'm looking at editing and you know that all affects I suppose my, my end goal or my vision but I'm definitely wanting to mix things up quite a bit whether it's going for something completely technical not necessarily my style and if it works awesome if it doesn't then it's just a great way to learn so I'm watch this space. <laughs> Social media trends for for 2014. Looking back, um, I would say that you know, from a Facebook point of view, it's probably getting a little bit boring. Um, photographs, great, some great photographs are posted online, shared online, but you know, I think it needs probably more media content, more videos, and I think from a wild eye point of view, you're going to see a lot more of that in in 2015. Excuse me, my darling, for sneezing. Um, so 2015, I would say Instagram is also going to play a, a bigger part in sharing of wildlife photography, but I think it's going to be live content that's going to drive um, social media in a, in a big way in 2015. Oh, that's quite, <laughs> that's quite tricky. For bad, um, going with that just because it's, it's easier, uh, obviously it's a very competitive um, genre, but Bad wise, I think, especially online, is that it just doesn't seem as passionate about images anymore mm. for certain people. There's a lot of commentary and it's very negative, but again, it's coming from a certain group of people or, yeah. But the, but the, the guys or the girls who are more, where you can see their passion really comes through. They don't take part in that mm. unnecessary commentary and I think that's the whole point of it is that it's, people just putting up their images. If you don't like it, you don't need to say anything. It doesn't change anything. Um, and it just gets quite nasty. For the good, 
there are a lot more people becoming part of it, and I think that's great. Um, the community is, I think, a little bit tighter in certain places as well, and especially asking for tips and constructive criticism and just being supportive of each other, that's what I've noticed quite a bit as well, which I think is very, very wonderful. I think from a good side or a good point of view would be all the people that are getting involved in photography. You're seeing a lot more people buying cameras, a lot more people starting to buy quality gear as well. Um, and and uh, yeah, traveling more, getting out there, putting themselves out there, coming on safaris. Um, so there's a lot of people getting involved in photography, which is good for the, it's good for the, for the, for the art, it's good for photography in general, and especially for South Africa. Um, I think there's a lot of talent in South Africa, um, a lot of emphasis on some of the European countries in the US, but I think um, there's a lot of undiscovered talent here as well. Um, from a negative point of view, I mean, I'm not one to really get involved with a lot of the, 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 the negative side of things, and, but I think especially if you, if you have to look at social media and platforms like Facebook, there's been a lot of great from it, but there's also been a lot of um, uh, negative in the sim and in terms of um, sure without stepping on toes <laughs> um, yeah just people posting first of all something for me personally is people posting a lot of content for the sake of posting I think um, if you want to share your work then and share the stuff that that, that um, people would want to see don't just share for the sake of I have to share a photograph every single day or um, you know and, and that to me is you know you end up scrolling through Facebook it's, it's mind numbing because there's just photo after photo and it just you become desensitized to it and it's just it's very rarely nowadays that I, that I find myself stopping and actually even clicking on a photograph to view it let alone you know hitting like or leaving a comment even um, so I think it's just it's just become a little bit too much it's too much um, uh, mundane content out there video um, I think that another few things is people and their opinions so I think that can often be kept for themselves. Um, there's a lot of um, individuals out there who are um, claiming to be things that, that they really aren't. Um, and I enjoy the guys out there who do what they do, they love what they do, they post their stuff and they get up, you know, they go on the flight. There's no, they don't carry on and, and, and get stuck on small things or try and make themselves bigger and better than what they really are. Um, and um, yeah, I think that's about that. I'm not going to go too far into that one. Some good things or some interesting things that I've seen is, is, is really a development in terms of the photography community and in terms of groups. There's a lot of big photographic, nature photography groups that have come up and they're really getting really good interaction. If you post a photo there, you get good engagement, you get uh, lots of questions about your photos. And, and it's a good, it's, it's, it's sort of developed in a way that, that you know, people used to go to online forums for that and they still do but I think it's 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 become something this year that I've noticed is big wildlife photography or nature photography groups that have popped up and that people are posting in and, and, and actually I think in a way because of the way Facebook inhibits the the what you see in your feed and the way they they structure what you see based on algorithms and whatnot it really uh, makes it easier for you to keep track of what you want to see. If, if you're interested in nature photography, you'll, you'll see a lot more stuff coming from groups because groups are by default, I think, the notifications come to your uh, stream unless you tick uh, to not receive notifications from that group. But you'll still see when one of your friends has posted a photo in that group. So that I think it's, it's, it's evolved in the way that Facebook has, has chunked off their algorithm and, and made the algorithm more more prone to to you know to be good for them for advertising wise and to try and remove clutter but I think people have have migrated to that to see, to sort of see more of the content they want to see regularly is by belonging to certain groups something that's always uh, bad when we talk about social media is just the, the the constant begging for likes and you know people who post for likes I mean it's it's easy to say that because most people want people to like their photos, so it's it's not that you shouldn't want that. But I think Jerry said that a lot, and many people have said it on on the wildlife feeds. Is just post, take photos for yourself, take photos that you enjoy, and share good quality work, and share your work for the sake of sharing, for the sake of putting it out there. It doesn't matter how many people like it or comment on it, and you know, constantly. I think it's 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 less of a thing that people begging literally to say please like my page, than it's it's people taking one photo and sharing it 
all over the place on the same day. So it's it's popping up in this group and this group and this group and on this page, and it's the same photo. So you get you get sort of inundated by a person's work. So in my personal strategy, I try to post different photos. If I do post a photo on my own page, I won't take that photo. I might share it to my own personal profile because I've got different people following me on these profiles, but I won't take that photo and just share it to 15 different groups and pages on the same day or the same week even. If I try, if I want to post in the nature photography group besides what I've posted on my page, I like to post something different. Even on different platforms, I like to paste a different, post a different photo on Google Plus or Twitter than, than what, on Instagram than what I've done on Facebook just to keep the content fresh and to keep people from, from actually switching off from your work. Uh, you know what I mean? So they don't get inundated with your work. Okay, social media, the good and the bad. Um, and the ugly. And the ugly. <laughs> there, I think, the one thing that I think is bad, and this goes for all the platforms, that people aren't keeping it real. I think they're creating something that they are not. They are sharing content from a selfish point of view, which is not the platform. It's not, it's not why social is there. It's not, it's not an ego boost. It's not that. People are paying, and it's very obvious when they do it, they pay to boost their numbers and then they climb on the false fame that they've created and call themselves a better photographer, but there's no change in their work. I think the, and that's, that's not keeping it real. People aren't, there's, I would rather personally have two people really enjoy what I put out and engage with me around it rather than having a million followers or 1,432 shares of an image. So I think keeping it real is a big problem. People don't understand the language of the different platforms and they just go after the numbers. Numbers game. It's not keeping it real. From a good point of view, I think there's more community involvement. Um, more people are getting into the photography, but I think it's a fine line between the negative because the first thing you want to do is suddenly I need more people to like my images. It's wrong. It's false. It's not about that. But I think the community involvement, more people being made aware of what's out there, of and not, not just the trips that we run, but of what's available out there. It's not just the Kruger and Piansburg and the Mara, whatever. There's more out there. I think the platforms make it possible for people to learn, which, which we're big into kind of teaching. So I think if people take the platform for what it is and they try and take value from it, that's great. But going over into the not keeping it real, oof, it's nasty. That's the idea. Trends, both good and bad and social. Wow. It's, it's an interesting one. I think this year has seen the rise of individuals creating Facebook pages for their photography to share their work. Um, not only creating those pages but promoting them and growing what is perceived to be a massive following. Um, so it, it's going to be very interesting to see how some of these guys harness it because um, you know to, to put your work out there as a um, sharing it with other people for the sake of sharing your photography for other people versus being driven by feeding the Facebook machine and, and gauging your level and your work based on the number of followers and engagement that you get, I think is something very, very different. So that, that's possibly a, ne a negative, depending on how people are planning to use that um, as a platform later on and, and harness it. Um, and I'm not thinking of specific individuals here, I'm just in, in general, I think that's, that's something in, in companies or corporates are doing the same thing, where they pushing and promoting these posts, getting all the followers, but what, how do you harness that? What are you leading them to? You've got the following, number one, are they engaged? Are you a community? Are you adding value? Is there a reason for them to keep coming back? What are you going to do with it? So that, that's an interesting one. On the good side, um, sure, I don't know. I don't think I paid too much attention to it, to be honest, to see what the good trends are. Um, I suppose you know it's been working very well for us in terms of growing the community, and I think that's probably one of the best things about social, if you use it correctly, is you can grow a community and you can add value. Um, and it's not necessarily to, to sell or to do anything, it's just the nature of providing a community for people to get engaged with. Yeah, so I hope 2014 has been as an exciting year for you as it has been for, for me and for us here at the Wild Law Offices. Um, and I hope that you're going to be taking a well-deserved break over this time and enjoying it, uh, some downtime with family and friends. And I hope that 2015 is going to be a year full of many wild adventures, perhaps wild adventures as well. So yeah, all the best for 2015, guys. Alright, well 2014 has been an exciting year. We've, I personally met so many people, so to you that I have met, have an incredible rest of your December festive season. To the people I haven't met, exactly the same and I look forward to meeting you in the future.
And lastly, I just want to wish all of you a wonderful Christmas, a blessed Christmas, and a happy new year. I hope all of your photographic dreams come true in 2015. God bless you. Thank you for traveling with us this year, and uh, thank you for being a part of the online community. We, I really believe we have a great team. We've got a great thing going, and uh, we've got a great community of photographers engaging. And we try, and we've said it a few times, we're trying to put the focus back on the experience and to making photographic safaris about more than just taking your camera and taking some shots. And uh, it's always about the people, the journey, uh, the adventure and we look forward to sharing more of that with you in the next in the coming year uh, I look forward to, to working with the team and creating these experiences for you uh, uh, Have a great time and be spend some time with your loved ones. I think that's one of the great fish focuses of the season is uh, Is to spend time with loved ones. I certainly am looking forward to spending time, time with family over the next two weeks. Cheers Jumbo My name is Isaac Kenyanjui A wild guy in South Africa and um, yeah, I'm head of the team in East Africa. And I take this opportunity to wish you a very, very Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year. Mm, that's the statement most people make. But from the bottom of my heart, truly speaking, I've been honored to be able to serve you as our guest during 2014 migration season, big cat safari, and the South Lake safaris. The next year, it's my hope that we are going to have a wonderful 2015 together. And we are looking forward to meeting you again and more guests. So, Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year. Santi Sana in Karibu, Kenya. Awesome, guys. So, yeah, I just wanted to wish everyone a, a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And um, if you're traveling, if you're on the road, so travel safe. If you have family, enjoy it. Um, hope you start the year fresh, uh, set those goals, um, and uh, yeah, all of the best for 2015 from the Wild Art team. Hope to see you next year on Safari. Cheers. Uh, guys, it's been a fantastic year. Uh, if you shared it with us, thank you so much. It's been real. It's. Um, we're closing offices today, so it's kind of the end of the year for us. If you guys are traveling, please travel safe. Have a fantastic festive season with the family. All the very best for 2015, and I look forward to changing the way you see the world next year. Wishing you a very Merry Christmas from the United Kingdom. They say um, England has a far more Christmassy feel than Africa. I'm not sure about that, but if you like seven hours of uh, daylight, cold, gloomy, windy, wet weather, then yeah, I suppose it does, but uh, for me, Africa, I'm African and uh, I far prefer Africa. But once again, just to all my colleagues, Jerry, Andrew, Marlon, Penny, Chad, have a beautiful Christmas, and to all our fans and followers and friends, wishing you a, a very Merry Christmas and a prosperous 2015. Take care, see you in 2015, John. Merry Christmas, everyone, and have a beautiful 2015.